Hey everybody, and welcome to another Jamovi tutorial. This is Learning Statistics with Jamovi, where we go through some of the more common analysis tools, not only from a SPSS perspective, that's the book I'm using to create these videos, but also alternatives to SPSS, because maybe you don't want to use SPSS anymore. It's expensive. While it's still an industry standard in the world of you know social science, especially social science undergraduate studies, it, uh, it's expensive. It is expensive. So in this video, what we're going to talk about is how to do a correlation, not with Pearson's R, but with Spearman's Rho. Now, Spearman's Rho is a correlation coefficient that is used, created by Spearman himself, is used when you fail to meet the assumptions of Pearson's R. So what are those violations of assumptions that will need that will cause you to use Spearman's Rho? A non-parametric test, which means there is a less power in the test itself to detect effects. Okay, so parametric would be Pearson's R, non-parametric correlation would be Spearman's Rho. Violation of assumptions include variables that are not normally distributed, variables that are ordinal. You cannot use nominal variables in this case. You would have to use a point by serial for nominal variables. But if you have an ordinal variable, you can use Spearman's Rho. Or if a variable has outliers. So a violation of one of these assumptions about a Pearson's R that um, normally distributed variables, they are continuous and they have no outliers, go use R. But if you, have, if you have violated one of those three, you have to use Spearman's row. You don't have to use Spearman's row, but it would be a better choice than trying to ham in uh, Pearson's R argument here because you violated one of the assumptions. Now, that is to say that most general linear model uh, statistics like R, T, F, etc., are fairly robust to normally distributed errors and um, outlier violations, okay? The ordinal variable, though, if you have an ordinal variable, you, you can't and you should not use GLM test statistics. So let's jump in here. So what I've opened is the data set from the Learning Statistics with Jamobi um, folks, LSJ data module from the plus sign here. And I have grabbed the um, Anscombe data Okay, Anscombe's quartet data it's used for correlations. Okay, and what it does is it just gives me 11, uh, 11 cases for X1 through X4 and Y1 through Y4. Okay, so there's no real context here. I just want to show you what Spearman's uh, row looks like when we do it in Jamovi. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go up to regression and we're going to go to correlation matrix. Now, correlation is by default on Pearson's. Now, we can do and we will do, let's just do Y. 1 to y4. Let's just put those all in there. Okay, so if we put all of the y's in, okay, and we look at these Pearson's values, they're all continuous variables, and so they all have different um, Pearson's r's. But let's uncheck this, shall we? And let's make that Spearman, okay? Well, we can compare them, actually. Okay, we can compare them. So imagine that um, we have violated either normally distributed, and then, actually, we can test that if we do... Okay, let's first see if we have normality issues with any of these y variables, okay? Or normality or um, outlier issues with y1 through y4. So let's go to exploration and let's get descriptive. So we're going to put y1 and y4 and we're going to put in variables, okay? And let's get some plots in here and let's get our histogram. Okay, y1, fairly normal. Ooh, y2 may not have, y2 is very skewed. Y3 looks like it has an outlier, and Y4 kind of looks like it has an outlier. So Y2, Y3, and Y4 look to be a bit skewed. So let's see what their um, skewness values are. Okay, skewness for Y1 is very small. Skewness for Y2, negative 1.32, that's not great. But Y3 and Y4 are also very skewed. So what we're going to do is we're going to use Y2, Y3, and Y4 and assume that these variables have violated the assumption of normality. Let's double check with our Shapiro Wilk. All righty. So they're on the edge here. So Y2, Y3, and Y4 don't necessarily violate it, but we're going to consider that they have for this example. The reason why I say that they don't actually have, unless you use 0.05, um, which I generally don't for assumption violations because they are very robust to assumption violations. These p-values are less than 0.05. And so they're on the edge there. This one's 0.09. So it's not as bad as, so Y4 is not as bad as Y2 and Y3 as far as skewness goes slash non-normality. The problem we have here is that there are only 11 in each of these samples, 11 cases. So we have an N of 11. So that's what's making these skewed, but also sort of borderline non-normal. So we can 
go further with our example. So we're going to use Y2, Y3, and Y4 in our correlation matrix. Okay. So it's going to pull up correlation matrix here. And um, we're going to use Y2 through Y4. Okay. Right. So it's going to give us three correlations, Y2 to 3, Y2 to 4, and then Y3 to 4. Okay. We're going to do that. We're going to flag significant correlations to see if there are any. And as you can see, with Pearson's R, we don't have significant correlations, although Y3 to Y2 is borderline. But let's see what happens if we also add Spearman. Okay, so rho is the uh, uh, statistic here, rho. Now, rho kind of looks like a fancy P um, in Greek. Okay, so it's a lowercase, it's a lowercase rho, and it kind of looks like a P. So just be aware of that. Um, now, if we look at it, so this was borderline, 0.588 Pearson's R. Look at the relationship now with Spearman's rho, 0 0.71. 0.71. And much like Pearson's, cor Pearson's R, Pearson's correlation, this coefficient does describe the strength and direction of the relationship. So Y2 to Y3 are correlated about 0.71 positively. Okay. P value is 0.02 or 0.019, depending on your flood. Okay. But you can see here that rho is much lower and negative between Y2 and Y4 than Pearson's R. Okay. It's much, 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 much lower. Look at that. It's like a drop of 0.4. It's like a drop of uh, 0.4. Wow. And then you can see here that there is also a drop of about 0.04 between Y3 and Y4. Both negative, so the direction of these relationships do not change. But the, the, the magnitude does change when we consider Spearman's rho versus Pearson's r. So that's how you wanna that's how you wanna use Spearman's rho in this case. So that's how you use the non-parametric test Spearman's rho to test correlations uh, that have violated Pearson's r's assumptions. Please leave your comments, questions, suggestions, and feedback down below. Thank you for watching.